Hi everyone, this is Brittany. Um, so since your Excel exam is tomorrow, I thought I might put together a last minute kind of emergency video for any of you who are completely lost about Excel. Um, even if you're not and you're just not sure about pivot tables or time value of money, this might be a good video for you to watch. Um, and feel free to watch it after the Excel exam if you need to a second time. So I'm just going to walk through the uh, sample Excel test. Um, this is not the real Excel exam. Uh, this is the practice one. So that being said, I would advise you to start at the first tab and work your way to the right just so you don't forget any. And I would advise you to work from the top down and don't jump around at all um, because a lot of people lose points that way. So I'm going to go to the first tab, which is Plantain Republic, and I'm just going to walk through this with you really quick. Feel free to follow along. Feel free to pause it if you need to. Um, I'll start with the first one, Merge and Center Cells C1 to D1. So for that, we would go to C1 and D1, click and drag across to highlight them. Most versions of Excel allow you to right-click and go to Format Cells, and in that case, you would click Alignment, click merge cells or make sure it's selected. If it already has a check mark you don't need to click it again and under horizontal click center and that should both merge and center your cells. If you don't have that function and you can't go to format cells feel free to highlight both of them click this button up here that will center them and I think the only way on mine is to go into format cells and merge them. Some of you might have a merge and center button. Feel free to use the help function. It doesn't look like I have a merge and center button. So you can do it either way on the exam. It won't show up as a difference. The second step is in the yellow filled cell right income statement. So I'll just go ahead and do that. On the exam, they might just show you an income statement and say fill in the correct title of the document displayed. So they might not tell you whether it's an income statement or balance sheet or a statement of cash flows. They'll just expect you to know. Step three, fill in the missing data for the income statement in C15, D15, C23, D23, C26, and D26. For this, you would want to use the sum function. If you just add all these up, and enter in a hard-coded number like this, it will be wrong. Um, you do have to use the cell equation. So for that, you would click equal sign, sum. Make sure you select the equation. Don't just click enter after you've hit sum. And then in the parentheses, you would highlight all the cells you wish to add together and click enter. That should give you the sum of all those numbers. To make the same equation on in this cell, D15, you would click C15 and put your cursor in the bottom right hand corner until a black plus appears. Then click and drag it to the right and it will duplicate the same equation. So now that we've done C15 and D15, let's repeat those functions in C23 and D23. So equals sum, select the equation, highlight the cells you wish to sum, enter, select C23, put your cursor in the bottom right hand corner until a black plus appears, and click and drag to the right. For net operating results, this is a tricky one because some people, some, some students might want to sum uh, revenues and expenses, but the way you calculate net operating results is actually revenues minus expenses. So for this one, we're going to do a simple arithmetic problem. So it's not an equation, but we're going to, technically it is because it has an equal sign, but um, it doesn't have a function in Excel. So we're going to click equal sign, then select the revenues, minus expenses, and click enter. And that should give us the difference. Again, to put this equation into D26, we're going to click C26, find our black plus again, and click and drag it over, and it will duplicate the equation. All right? 
Step four is format all the financial statement numbers to include commas, decimals, and dollar signs. A shortcut with this one is to just format it in dollar signs because it should pop up giving you decimals and commas. Um, I'll go ahead and show you what I mean. So if you highlight all the cells that you want to display in dollar signs, which means do not include the dates, I will have to mark it wrong. If you highlight, that means click and drag from C7 to, what is that, D23? Click Command, and then click C26 and D26. And it should have all the cells except these four right here highlighted. Okay? Then we're going to click this dollar sign button up here. Um, you can click the dollar sign, or if you would like, you can go into Toolbox, and under Format, click Currency. All right. So it looks like it didn't do that for these two cells here, so I'm going to display these two in dollar signs using this button. And there you go. You can do it either way, click the dollar sign or go into your toolbox, whichever is easier for you. Um, in column E, common size of the 2011 values. For this, we would want to take all of these numbers and divide them by total operating revenue. So let's start with the cell next to total operating revenue. We would type equals this cell, D15, divided by D15, which should give us 1 or 100%, depending on how you have it formatted. If you have it as a 1, you want to make sure it's in percentages. So since this whole section is going to have to be in percentages because it's common size, I'm going to go ahead and highlight all of these and click the percentage sign. Again, you can go into your toolbox and click under Format, Percentage, and that should give us 100%. If you don't want the two decimals afterward, and I suggest you don't put them on there just because it's easier for me to read, you can click Decrease Decimal in your toolbox twice until both zeros go away, or this button should be on your toolbar too. If you don't have this bottom toolbar, by the way, you can right click on anywhere in the gray area at the top, go to toolbars, and standard and formatting are both of the ones I have displayed. So let's finish the common sizing. Since we want all of these numbers to divide by this number, we can't simply click the 100% and click and drag down, because then they will all be 100% except these two because they're not referencing anything. Do you see what I mean? It thinks it's D18, D19, D20. So to fix that, what we're going to do, I just clicked undo, by the way, in case you guys missed that, is I'm going to put in our dollar signs. So since we want to lock in the denominator as D15, we're going to type dollar sign D, dollar sign 15, and click enter. And then when we click and drag, it should give us some different percentages. See? To click and drag upwards, we need to click away, click the 100% again, find our black plus, and click and drag up. That should work the same way. All right? Before you submit this, I suggest highlighting these two, right-clicking and clicking Clear Contents, just to clean it up a little bit. And same thing with these two. We don't need the percentage next to the date. So let's go Clear Contents. Make sure you don't hit Delete Cells, Delete, because that will shift all of your percentages up or down or left, depending on which one you select, and it'll make all your numbers off. That just helps me out if you clear those cells that don't need to be percent and have percentages in them. So if you know under 5, it says you must use absolute cell referencing for full credit on 5. That just means the dollar signs, which is what we did. So number 6 says create a scatter plot of net operating results from 2010 to 2011 in this same worksheet. Um, so to do that, we would want to highlight both dates and both numbers for net operating results. Make sure you have the dates in there because it'll make it a lot easier when you go to put in your units on the horizontal axis. 
Make sure all cells are highlighted and go to Insert, Chart. When this menu pops up, you should go to XY Scatter and click the very first one, the one with no lines or anything on it, just dots. So let's click that. And then it should have it all formatted for you. So that's the first step in number six. Number seven says appropriately label the title and both axes in the graph. So to do this, the easiest way for me to do this in my version is to go to Toolbox. Let's move that out the way really quick. Is to go to Toolbox and under Chart Options, you can choose Chart Title, Horizontal Axis, or Vertical Axis. Let's start with the title and let's type it here, Net Operating Results. Then we're going to select Horizontal Axis and we can just title this Year. I can spell, I promise. Goodness. E-A-R. <laughs> it's been a long day. Vertical axis, let's just title this dollars to make it simple. You'll notice that the years are still in decimals. So to fix that, I'm going to close out of my toolbar. I don't think you have to, but just to keep the screen clean. I'm going to click the horizontal axis until a box like this shows up. Then I'm going to right click and click Format Axis. This menu should pop up. Then I'm going to go to Scale and make sure the major unit is 1, not 0 0.2. Otherwise it'll go 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, and that's not what we want. We want it to go 2009, 2010, 2011, etc. So I'm going to make sure this is a 1 and click Enter. And then those four dates should pop up. The next step, number eight, is to delete the legend. So we're going to click the legend, and you can either hit delete or backspace on your keyboard, or you can go into your toolbox if you still have it open, and under legend, click none. Either way works. The legend should go away. By the way, if your graph pops up and your y-axis is not automatically in dollar signs, you can click your y-axis, right-click, go to format axis, and I believe it's number. Yes, it's loading. Number. And then go to accounting. So mine defaulted to accounting, so it won't let me change it unless I click link to source. So you should have accounting. I believe currency also works. Okay. Um, number nine says add a dashed linear trend line to your graphs. I didn't get a chance to go over this a lot with you in class. Um, one, because mine wasn't working. Um, and two, because I believe we just ran out of time. So I'm going to go over it now. Let's click the points. Make sure you have the points selected. That's why it wasn't working in class for me. I was doing it wrong. I was clicking the graph and then trying to add a trend line. So make sure the points are selected. Go to chart, add trend line and a line should pop up between the cells. For some of you, this menu might pop up. In case it doesn't, select the trend line, right click, and go to Format Trend Line, and that menu will pop up. It says, format this line three points and green. So since we're, all, we're already on the color menu, let's click Color and pick any green, preferably a vibrant one so, you can, so I can see as soon as I look at it. Then we're going to go to Weights and Arrows, and here we can make it dashed and change the weight of it. So if you look at the trend line, when I click Dashed, it should change to Dash Pattern. And the weight is how thick the trend line is. So to make it three point, all you would do is delete whatever's there and click three, and it should increase the weight to three. So it'll make our trend line wider. So that's number 10. Uh, by the way, when you, let me make this menu bigger. When you turn this in, make sure that your graph is out of the way of everything else. I can't stress this enough. <laughs> it makes it a whole lot easier when grading. Number 11, replace this cell with the current time. So if you remember correctly, um, to make the current time appear in the cell, we would click equals now. So 
Let's click that and then just click enter and the current time should pop up along with the current date for some versions. Some versions don't have the date, just the time. All right, so we are done with the first tab, Plantain Republic. Let's move on to inventory. So the first thing you might notice about this page is that there are some number signs here. If that's the case, you can take your cursor up between the C and the D and you can click and drag to increase the width of column C or I'm going to click undo. For some versions, you can put the cursor between C and D and double click and it will adjust the width automatically. And I'm going to do that for column B too because maximum cost is crossing over and that bothers me. <laughs> It might not bother you. It's okay if you don't adjust the width on the exam, but just to help you see it. And the same for column E. All right, so let's start. The first instruction is under the label unit cost, use conditional formatting to highlight cells greater than or equal to $50 in yellow. So let's highlight all of the numbers under unit cost and go to format, conditional formatting. This menu might look a lot different for you. It should be under Format, though. Or you might be able to right-click and click Conditional Formatting. It varies by version. If you can't find out where Conditional Formatting is, you can click your Help function and type in Conditional Formatting, and the program should direct you to wherever your button is for that. So for Conditional Formatting, it wants us to highlight the cells greater than or equal to 50. So if cell value is greater than or equal to and make sure you do click greater than or equal to and not greater than because unfortunately I'll have to mark both points off. So greater than or equal to 50 you do not need the dollar sign. Let's go to format and if you notice mine defaulted to changing the font so if I were to change the color I would be changing the font color. I don't want to do that so I'm going to go to patterns and then click yellow Okay, and it should highlight the cell if it's greater than or equal to 50. So then I'm going to click OK. So that's step one. Step two, under the label reorder, use an if statement as follows. Have the formula write yes if inventory is less than 150. One second, guys. <laughs> 